Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to a Gran Turismo 7 science video. It's a wee while since we've done one of these, but in this one we're going to take a look at brake balance and in particular we're going to look at what brake balance does to your tyre wear. And there's a very definite opinion about how tyre wear and brake balance work together. Essentially, uh, if you run the brake balance towards the front of the car, then the opinion is that you will wear the front tyres out more. If you run the brake balance to the rear, then you can protect those front tyres and move some of that tyre wear towards the rear tyres. If you're not entirely sure what brake balance is, essentially put, if you look at you've got 100% braking power, if you have the brake balance in a neutral position, which is zero on Gran Turismo, then you're sending 50% of your braking power to the front of the car and 50% of your braking power to the rear of the car. If you move it towards the front, then you're moving more of your braking power to the front of the car. If you move it to the rear, you're moving more of your braking power to the rear of the car. And it's going to depend on the track, on the car and the characteristics of the car, what you want to do with that brake balance. So for example, for a car that has a sketchy rear end, think of like maybe a rear engine Porsche or something going into something like say Suzuka turn one, uh, they go into turn one, the rear of the car tries to step out under the brakes. Then you maybe want to move the brake balance towards the front to induce a little bit of understeer and a little bit more stability. On the flip side, if you have a car that's understeering a lot and you're trying to induce some rotation into the car, then you'll probably be looking to move the brake balance to the rear. The rotation is king in Gran Turismo 7 and in sim racing in general and probably real life racing as well. The more you can get the front of the car pointed into the corner, the quicker you can get on the power, the quicker you can set your lap times. But the other thing you'll hear people talk about in Gran Turismo 7 when it comes to brake balance is looking after your tyres. So the theory goes, and I also believe in this theory, is that if you want to look after your front tyres, or if you're burning your front tyres out a little bit too much, you can move the brake balance to the rear to look after the front tyres, and vice versa, if you're burning out the rear tyres and see an AMR car, you can move the brake balance to the front of the car to help look after those rear tyres. And I just thought, you know what, let's actually do a test to confirm that theory, because I don't think anyone's ever really done a test, and I've certainly never seen a test. So I've done a quick test here, and your test conditions are up on the screen. We're at Monza, no chicane, so there's obviously a couple of big braking zones here, but there's not too many corners, so it should allow me to just do consistent lap times. We're in the non bop Group 4 Jaguar F-Type. We are on the racing soft tyres with tyre wear at times 5, fuels at times 1, we're running weak ABS as we always do now and we are in time trial conditions to keep the test exactly the same in terms of temperature which is 18 degrees and the wind speed is 2.1 metres just about facing exactly north. So let's move on to the first of the three tests we're going to do. We're going to use neutral brake balance, we're going to use brake balance all the way to the front which is minus 5 and we're going to use brake balance all the way to the rear which is plus 5 and obviously neutral brake balance is zero. So when we're running zero brake balance, we've essentially got 50% of our braking power going to the front of the car, 50% of our braking power going to the rear. And uh, yeah, this non-BOP Jaguar uh, F-Type Group 4 car, lovely to drive around here, a little bit more power, a little bit more kind of straight line speed, and yeah, it felt very nice to drive. As we come to the end of our six laps, you can see our best lap there, a 143.9, and the tyre that's doing all the work, as you would expect, going through uh, the fast first corner and the two lesmos is that front left tyre. So that was kind of our control uh, run, if you like, as we want to kind of then move on to our minus five brake balance run here. So this is putting the brake balance all the way to the front of the car. So what this should do is induce a little bit more understeer in the car, and I can definitely confirm that I could feel a little bit more understeer, particularly through the Lesmo corners, so they're kind of medium speed, fairly fast corners, and I could definitely feel that the car would just try to kind of push the weight onto the front, under the brakes, into those corners, exactly what you sh would expect. And if the theory is correct, this should have a little bit more tyre wear towards the front of the car, uh, which we'll check upon later. But interestingly enough, we actually went uh, a good bit faster than our uh, zero brake balance run by a couple of attempts. And we were consistently faster as well, uh, with a lot more lap times in the 43s compared to uh, the neutral brake balance run. And moving on to our final run, this is the brake balance at plus 5. So the theory should be that we should have a little bit more rotation and I can confirm that when we went through the Lesmo corners compared to the minus 5 brake balance, I could definitely feel the car having a little bit more rotation. Could definitely get the nose of the car into the corner a little bit earlier 
and it was allowing me to get onto the power a little bit earlier and you can see in our lap times it seems to have been reflected there as well now i will say that we are obviously doing more and more laps and this is the last test we've done so we're probably just getting a little bit more in tune with the car and the track as well uh, but yeah this should kind of look after the front tires so let's move on to those results and see if what we expected to happen has happened so here is the tyre wear results of the free test. We've got minus 5 on the left, 0 in the middle, plus 5 on the right. Let's just take a look at minus 5 versus plus 5 initially on those front tyres. So the minus brake balance should have a little bit more tyre wear on the front. So if we look at that front left tyre compared to plus 5, that is definitely the case. It's nothing huge, but that is 30 laps around Monza or the equivalent of 30 laps around Monza. And I would say that would probably be a couple of laps worth of tyre wear at least looking at the rear tires compared by comparing plus five to minus five we would expect the plus five to have a little bit more tire wear than minus five and that is also the case although it might be kind of hard for you to see it is a very very fine difference between them it's definitely a little bit more tire wear on the plus five so yeah the the tire wear is doing as we would expect between minus five and plus five the interesting thing here is that when we look at the neutral brake balance we actually have better tire wear on both the rear and the front compared to minus five and plus five now there could be a couple of reasons for that happening the first one might be i did that test first maybe i wasn't pushing the car quite as hard uh, through some of the corners that is definitely one reason why that might be the case the other reason could just be that the neutral brake balance just works all four tyres in conjunction together a little bit less. Obviously, if you're running the brake balance at minus five, you're putting more load through the front tyres. Uh, obviously, inducing a little bit of understeer is going to work those front tyres a little bit harder. If you're running all the way to the rear, you're using the rear tyres to get the car around the corner, inducing little micro slides, which also kind of maybe have a little bit of sliding impact on the front tyres. So maybe just running the brake balance in a neutral position just doesn't work the four tyres quite as hard as a whole. And possibly that's why we weren't quite as fast as well. But it's an interesting kind of result because and that's why I love doing these tests, folks, because whilst the results have thrown up one answer that we were expecting, obviously the difference between the tyre wear on the front of the car between minus five and plus five is exactly the result we were expecting. On the rear, it was a little bit less but definitely still in line with the theory this result with the neutral brake balance with the tire wear actually been better overall is just something that i wasn't quite expecting as i said that's why i love doing these tests it gives me food for thought hopefully it gives you some food for thought as well now it must be said this is one car at one track in one test and if you really wanted to get a conclusive result you'd probably have to do multiple tests in the same car and then test some different cars as well possibly test some different tracks but you can just imagine how time consuming that would become it would be hours and hours and hours of driving for one 10 minute video uh, so yeah i just wanted to kind of put an initial little thought out there and i'll maybe do some more testing privately for myself and let you know what i'm coming up with and maybe some live streams or future videos but yeah hopefully you've enjoyed this little test as i said it's confirmed one thing for us it's maybe thrown up another little question to be considered at the same time but as i said hopefully you've enjoyed it thank you very much for watching please hit the like button please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and i'll catch you on the next one goodbye now